Good morning. GS1 U.S. member support. This is Aiden. How can I help you today? I was told I need a UPC for my products. Can I get that from you? I received a letter from my customer telling me that I need a shipping container code for the cases I ship to them. Will you help me with that? I have my company prefix. How do I get the rest of the numbers for my UPC? I recently received my manufacturer ID number. Now, what do I need to do to label my products? How do I get started? Sure, I can help you with that. There are a lot of different terms that people use when calling GS1 US. Let's get started. Welcome to the course, learn about the G10. I'm Aiden, a member support associate here at GS1 US. You probably remember me from the company prefix course. Once again, I'm here to help you understand the topic. In this case, the identification number known as the G10, or global trade item number. If you haven't taken the company prefix course, I would recommend that you go through that course to understand how it relates to a G10. Before you can create a G10, it is necessary to license a company prefix. In the past, you might have known this as a manufacturer identification number, but this is an outdated term. Company prefix is the correct term. Many people call GS1 US to ask questions about identifying their products and how to get started. What I'm going to explain in this course is that a G10 is used to do this. People often think that a G10 is the same as the barcode, but it's not. Today, we'll focus on helping you understand this GS1 identification number. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define a G10 and have an understanding of a trade item, as well as the different G10s and their uses. We'll end this course by explaining how you can use G10s to identify all your product packaging levels, the each individual unit, inner pack, and case. Let's get started. Now that you have a company prefix, you may be wondering how to get started identifying your products and labeling them with barcodes. A barcode includes multiple lines and spaces as well as numbers. The lines and spaces are actually the barcode, while the numbers below are the identification number that corresponds to the barcode. Before you can generate the barcode, the identification number, in this case a GTIN, needs to be assigned. GTIN stands for Global Trade Item Number. A GTIN uniquely identifies products in the supply chain. Let's go back to the member support phone calls. Many of the questions that people ask can be answered the same way. Let's look at a phone call already in progress discussing the GTIN. It is a globally unique number that identifies a product or product grouping in the supply chain. I'm not sure if I really understand what you mean by supply chain. Well, by supply chain, I am referring to the people and companies that are involved in moving a product from the manufacturer to the consumer. The supply chain might include the manufacturer, the distribution centers, and the retail stores. Oh, okay. As you learned in the company prefix course, your company prefix uniquely identifies your brand in the supply chain. Similarly, a GTIN uniquely identifies your trade items in the supply chain. Ah, but what's a trade item? A trade item is any product that is bought or sold. It can be anything that you put on a shelf in a store, list in your catalog, or create an invoice for. A trade item is anything from the clothing you wear to a tube of toothpaste or a mixer. Okay, I sell hand sanitizers. Does that mean my trade item is a bottle of hand sanitizer? Yes, the hand sanitizer is the item that's sold in the store, the trade item. The G10 is simply a number that identifies your trade item. Well, I already have an internal identification number that I use for my product. Can I use that? I know some people call that a SKU. It is not recommended that an internal identification number be used within your G10 because it is just that, an internal number, and it may not be globally unique. It may conflict with another manufacturer's internal identification number. You'll learn more about this in Lesson 2. Okay, I think I get it. I understand that one bottle of hand sanitizer gets a G10 because it's my trade item. 
But what do I do when a case is ordered? Do I use the same GTIN? No. GTINs may identify both individual items and cases, but each would be identified by its own unique GTIN. To identify an individual product, you would use a G1012. To identify a case, you would use a G1014. G1012? G1014? What are those? These are simply terms for identification numbers. Many people refer to a G1012 as a UPC, but we always refer to it as a G1012. Similarly, the G1014 has been called a shipping container code, or SCC, in the past, which is an outdated term. Let's take a step back to help you understand this. Global trade item number is really an umbrella term for globally unique numbers that identify trade items or product groupings in the supply chain. G1008, 12, 13, and 14 are formats of a G10 that are all under this umbrella. These numbers, 8, 12, 13, and 14, represent the number of digits in the G10. You should be aware of all four formats, but we'll focus on the G10 12 and G10 14 today. These are predominantly used in United States and Canada, while the G10 8 and G10 13 are commonly used in all other parts of the world. Okay. I'm located in Utah, and I only sell within the U.S., so I really only need to worry about the G1012 and the G1014? That's correct. U.S.-based companies assign G1012s to their individual products and G1014s to other packaging levels, such as cases or pallets, to identify product groupings. Hmm. You've mentioned product groupings a couple of times. What are those? That's a good question. A product grouping is referring to how you would package your product to ship it where it will be sold. You will probably put multiple bottles in a case and ship that case. This case is a product grouping. And I would identify that case with a G1014. Right. It can be used in the receiving department. The G1014 is not meant to be used at the checkout. So the biggest difference between the two is that the G1012 is intended for checkout and a G1014 is not? Yes, that's the biggest difference between the uses. A G1012 is used to identify a single trade item, a frying pan, a loaf of bread, or a pair of jeans, while a G1014 identifies product groupings. So now that I understand the difference between a G1012 and 14, how do I create each one? Ah, that's what you'll learn about in Lesson 2. Great job! You have just completed Lesson 1, Defining a G10. You should now be able to define a G10, describe a trade item, and recognize the different G10s and their uses. Next, you'll take Lesson 2, Creating a G10. I'll see you there.